Thank you, Brother Tyler. Miss Haley, appreciate that good music. Amen. All right. If you got your Bibles tonight, take your Bible and turn with me in the Word of God to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter number one. Jonah chapter number one. I appreciate all the good singing that we have here around the church. Appreciate all of you that sing. If anybody ever wants to sing, just let me know. And we'll get it lined up. Uh, amen. All right. Jonah chapter number one. When you get your place, say amen. All right. You find Daniel, keep going to the right. You find Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah. If you get to Matthew, you went too far. All right? Amen. Jonah chapter number one. When you find your place, say amen. All right, read with me in the word of God. Jonah chapter number one, verse number one. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof. Went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. The Lord sent out a great wind unto the sea, into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the mariners were afraid, cried every man unto his God, little g-God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship of the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Father, as we come to you tonight, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for helping us. And we ask you tonight that you would help us once again afresh and anew. Speak to our hearts. By the Holy Spirit of God, using the Word of God, I pray you'd help us. I pray, God, you'd have your will and way in this service tonight. Stir and change the hearts of your people. Those that are not saved, I pray, God, you'd save them before it's too late. Those that are, I pray, God, you'd help us to be aware and attentive and to be responsive when you speak to our hearts. Help us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. I didn't read the entirety of the story. I take for granted you have read or heard the story of Jonah. But it's interesting to me in verse number 5, the Bible said that Jonah was going down into the sides of the ship and lay and was fast asleep. And then in verse number 6, when the shipmaster came, he said to him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? He identified Jonah as O sleeper. You say, preacher, we know the story. Jonah's in the midst of the storm of his life. Jonah was a sleep preacher. Yes, Jonah was sleeping in the storm because Jonah was sleeping before the storm, not physically, but on God. Jonah was asleep on God. You know, I've, I have... Uh, known some people down through the years, possibly you have known some. I've known some people that I've worked with in years gone by that sleep on the job. They, I mean, they were known to sleep on the job. If I ever worked with somebody that slept on the job, I remember this. I remember this very vividly, man. I, I and I, I'll probably just say his name, but I ain't really trying to. Uh, but uh, right after I got out of high school, there were some ladies that I knew. They worked at Hershey Chocolate, and they called me. And they said, Travis, you want a job? I said, absolutely, I'll take a job. And so I went to work at Hershey Chocolate Company. I was up there making nutrageous candy bars when they first came out. And, man, we was having a good time every night, having a good time. But anyway, something happened on that line, and I got shifted around, and we was cleaning one night. We were cleaning up. They had this room that was probably twice the size of this building and probably, I'm going to guess, three, four stories high. Uh, and, and it was full of tanks, like, 
probably big as round as uh, half of this room. I'm talking about some big tanks that was full, I guess, full of chocolate because it was chocolate leaking out the valves. And so they sent us in there, and they said, we want you all to go in there, and we want you all to just take these towels and these things, go in there and clean everything, wipe it down, clean it all. I'm talking about big old metal tanks full of candy. Who wants that job? Well, what they didn't tell you was about 150-some degrees in there. I don't know how hot it was, but they had some kind of rule where it was so hot you couldn't stay in there but so long. And so you had to come out every periodically. You couldn't go in there by yourself and stay. You had, you're supposed to come out because you get too hot. I guess you pass out or something. I don't know. Anyhow, I'm in there working with an old boy named Todd. We was both fresh out of high school, and I was in there working, man. I, I mean, honest with y'all, I, I never wanted to get in trouble when I was at work. I wanted to impress my boss. I wanted him to look at me and say, he's doing a good job. I wanted to raise. I wanted the job. You know what I'm saying? I needed the money. And so I'm in there working, and I'm, I mean, we got these uh, big old tarp, like black tarp laid out there. And, I, and I'm sitting there trying to, uh, you know, you're supposed to put them out and work, stand on them so you ain't walking on things that you're wiping on and all that stuff. And I'm looking around. I'm like, man, it got awful quiet. Of course, there's awful noise in there anywhere from the machines. But I said, I don't hear nobody talking. And here I am on one level, and I'm looking up the next level, looking down at the next level. And I'm looking all around. I said, Todd, where you at? I couldn't find Todd. And I come around the corner. When I come around the corner on the other side of one of them big old tanks, there's a, the, the big old Looked like a trash bag, tarp laid out, black, and there laid Todd. I'm thinking, man, what's wrong, Todd? He's rubbing his eyes. Man, I was asleep. I mean, how are you sleeping here? It's 150 degrees. I don't know. It might be 120. It was hot. I just know that. You sweat without working, all right? And, and, and he's asleep. That ain't the only person. I can tell you all kinds of stories. I can tell you, listen to stories about people sleeping on the job. And, and man, I'm telling you, some of them's funny and some of them ain't so funny. One night I was working third shift. I worked over here at ATC. It used to be Westinghouse right before I came to New Hope. That's where I was working. And I was over there working one night working third shift. And on third shift, I got tired. I ain't going to lie to y'all. God made third shift for sleep and not working. Hey, man, I never did figure out how you eat supper in the middle of the night. I couldn't figure that out. And I couldn't sleep during the day good. Anyhow, I was over there on my break. When I went to break, I'd go to the break room, and they had this, I hope they don't get mad at it, but they had this big old table. It, I mean, a granite table for measuring things, and I'm talking about highly, highly, I'm just real, real, real good stuff in there, real nice tools and all this stuff. I crawl up on that table, and I take me a nap. That's how tired I was. I could sleep on a rock, all right? I'm talking about tired. But anyhow, there's some people that they didn't just sleep there. They'd go hide in the corner somewhere and sleep. And all I'm just simply saying I ain't trying to get everybody in trouble. I'm just telling you, I have known people that sleep on the job. Y'all ain't never slept on the job, have you? But let me say this. Unfortunately, I've known some people that didn't just sleep on the job. I've known some people down through my life that sleep on God. Sleep on God. You imagine sleeping on God. Now, I, I, I heard about a funny story. I heard about a man one day who was, he was in church, and he was dozing off. I mean, I wish Brother Jimmy was here. I'd pick on him about this. Brother Jimmy struggles sometimes with his sugar and all that. But watch this. Uh, I, I heard about a man that was dozing off in church uh, one night, and he heard, all he heard while he was sitting there, he heard stand up. So he stood up. People started clapping, and the pastor said, who else give $5,000? You stand up. Be careful, be careful when you respond, amen, and be careful when you go to sleep in church. I'm telling you, that's a funny story, but Jonah went to sleep on God. Jonah was asleep on God, and I'm afraid we've got a lot of people in our churches that are just like Jonah. Listen, they might be saved, but they are sleeping on God. You think it's bad if somebody sleep on the job. You think it's bad. I tell you a story about a man in there uh, supposed to be cleaning up, and he's in there sleeping. You think that's bad, and it is bad. But I tell you what's worse than that is people to go to sleep on God. I'm telling you, a lot of the church is at ease in Zion, and we have been rocked to sleep. Uh, listen, I'm telling you, Satan, just soon you get comfortable and you get careless and go to sleep as you would to see down at the ballroom. He knows you can't get sober, but he can, lose, he can get you to lose your testimony, lose your zeal. Is everybody all right? I'm afraid we've got a lot of people tonight that sleep on God. If I don't do anything in these days, 2022, until Jesus comes, if I can do anything, I want to sound alarm, I want to ring the bell, I want to holler, I want to clap, I want to say, wake up, wake up, thou of sleepers. Jonah was asleep on God. Number, number one, think about this. Think about Jonah's choice. I said he was asleep on God before he was asleep in the boat. But think about this. Think about his choice. Uh, his choice in verse number one, uh, we find that the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, uh, son of Amittai. 
You, you, if you think you can pronounce it, Amittai better, hey, help yourself. But verse number 2, uh, he said, this is what God said, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. God gave him a direct command. He said, I want you to rise. Get up, Jonah. And, he, and listen, he said, I want you to go, Nineveh. Go to Nineveh, you know. uh, go to Nineveh Jonah. And he said, it's a great city down there. It's a great city. Man, it must have been a big place. It must have been a great place. The Bible says a great city. And he said, I want you to cry against it. So not only is he supposed to get up and go, he's supposed to cry out a message against the city. Listen, he's talking about a wickedness. He said, their wickedness is, uh, has come up before me. And God didn't call Jonah to go down there and to compromise and to encourage them and to, and to tell them what a great person they were. But God called Jonah to go down there, get his finger reared up in the air and say, Thus saith the Lord, and your wickedness is great, and it's time to get right with God. That was his command. I'm saying Jonah heard a definite divine word from God that revealed God's will to Jonah. And you know what Jonah did? Jonah disobeyed. Hey, some people sitting around today, and they talking about, I'd like to know the will of God. I want to know the will of God, preacher. If God would speak to my heart, if God would speak to me and tell me what, I, what, I, what he wanted me to do, I'd do it. I got good news for you. God is speaking to you. God is speaking to you. He not, he's not on a megaphone. He, listen, he's not coming across the loudspeaker. He, he's not sitting there hollering in your ear. You know how you know God's will? The Word of God is the will of God. The Word of God is the will of God. Notice in verse number, uh, uh, I think it's verse number one, it said, The Word of the Lord came unto Jonah. The Word of the Lord came unto Jonah. I believe that to be the pre-incarnate Christ. But you know how you hear, you know how you and I hear the will of God and the word of God? It's through the word of God right here. That's how you know what God wants you to do. God has something for you in his word. And his work and his will and his way is clear in the word of God. Clear in the word of God. You say, preacher, I, I read the word of God and I, I, I just don't know what God wants me to do. Then listen, you may not understand everything, but I'm telling you that the will of God be clear when you get in the book. And if it, listen, if it's not clear to you, if it's not clear to you and you think, well, I, I think I might ought to do this, I, I think I ought to go here, I think I ought to do this. If, if it's not clear, it's not the Word of God's fault. The Word of God's clear. Maybe something in your life, maybe something in your heart that you need to get right. You may, you may need to get in tune with the author. But the Word of God is clear, and God will reveal to you His will for your life through the Word of God. You don't have to, you don't have to go down to the, to the, uh, you know, the, 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 the person with the crystal ball, the psychic. You don't have to go down there and see them. And you ain't got to call nobody on their religious television show and, and, and pay them big money and get a handkerchief from them and, and find out what God wants from you. i tell you what God wants from you. God wants a relationship with you the way you get in a book, spend time with Him, and find out what His Word says do. Jonah heard that word. Jonah had the word of God speak to him definitely and divinely, and Jonah disobeyed. If Jonah disobeyed, let me say this. If Jonah disobeyed hearing the voice of the Lord and the word of the Lord spoken to him, how much easier is it for you and I to disobey when we're supposed to be reading it ourselves? Jonah was disobedient to the, to the command. Jonah's disobedient. Watch this. His choice was deliberate. And no doubt in my mind, his choice was deliberate. Watch this. The Bible said, verse number 3, but Jonah. That's a, that's a conjunction. That's a, that's a change. Here's the command in verse number 1 and 2. Verse 3, but Jonah rose up. He, he got up all right, right? He rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He going a different direction. He ain't going to Nineveh. He going to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. And it, it, somebody says you can run, but you can't hide. And he went down to Joppa. Can I say this? When you leave the presence of the Lord, you sure enough going down. And he went down to Joppa. He found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it and to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. A deliberate choice. Nobody made it. He didn't just happen to go down there. Jonah didn't go down there. Listen, Jonah didn't go down there and say, well, I didn't know what I was going to do today, but I, I think I'll just go over here and get on this boat and go over. No, 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 no. You know what Jonah did? Jonah made a deliberate choice to go a different direction. 
God gave him a clear command. God gave him, a, a, listen, a direct order. And Jonah said, no, I don't think I'm going to Nineveh today, God. I think I'm going down here and get on the boat and go to Tosh. I'm going, I don't want anything to do with it, God. I don't want to hear you. That's what he said. He's going to flee from the presence of the Lord. A deliberate. And watch this. His choice was, was directional. His choice was directional. You say, what do you mean, preacher? He is going from the presence of the Lord. And I tell you, when God speaks to your heart, God shows you what he wants to do, and you don't listen, and you do something different, you know which direction you're going? You're going away from God. You're going away from God. If you're not doing what God wants you to do, you're saying, no, God, and you're walking away from God. Oh, you, you say, I can't lose my salvation. No, you can't lose your salvation, but you're going to see here in a minute, oh, Jonah lost. He paid the fare, amen. Watch it. We see his choice. His choice was disobedient. His choice was deliberate. His choice was directional. And I tell you something tonight, you, listen, you are manifesting which direction you're going in life by the choices you're making. There's people that ought to have been in church tonight, but they made a choice not to come. Some of them people, I understand, there are people that can't come. There's people that's providentially hindered. But there's some people that could be here, and they make the choice, I just don't want to go. I, and not just tonight, but other times. I don't want to serve. I don't want to get involved. God wants me to witness. I don't want to witness. God wants me to do that. I don't want to. And you know what? Your choices, your choices are directing your life. Number two. Jonah's choice. Number two, Jonah's character. Jonah was known for what he was doing. Look at verse number six. So the shipmaster came unto him, said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Look down at verse number nine. Jonah's talking here in verse number nine. And he said unto him, I'm an Hebrew. I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which had made the sea and the dry land. Jonah knew who God was. Jonah knew him. But he wasn't known for what he said he believed. He was known for what he was showing. Are you listening? There's a lot of people, a lot of people that profess to know the Lord Jesus. And you're not known for what you say you believe. You're known and your testimony is known as what people see you doing. Oh, sleeper. That's what the man called him. The shipmaster is like the captain. He's the man that owned the boat. He said, oh, sleeper. It's a fact. Listen, he's down there sleeping. It's a fact. Some of y'all need to understand this. You can be out of the will of God and still get a good night's rest. Some people think, oh, if you get out of the will of God, you're going to be miserable. Oh, no, not necessarily. Pleasures of sin is fun for a season. You can get out of the will of God and enjoy it for a moment. But there's coming a day. There's coming a day. I'm telling you, uh, God will stir your waters. Jonah was sleeping in the storm. Watch the storm now. You, you say, what kind of storm was it? Well, if I go back to verse number uh, 4, the Bible said the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, that there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so the ship was like to be broken, and the mariners were afraid. These men, listen, these men whose lifestyle, whose occupation was to sail ships and to ride the storms and to go across the sea, they were afraid for their life. Jonah was asleep. He wasn't sleeping because he was in the will of God. He was sleeping because he was running from the presence of God. And he didn't care what happened. Listen, he was going where he wanted to go. He made his choice, and he showed his character. What they called Jonah and what Jonah called himself did not line up. Jonah should have been known. Listen, think about it. In verse number one, hey, arise, Jonah. In verse two, go to Nineveh, the great city. Cry against him. The wickedness has come up against him. Uh, Jonah, at this time, he should have been over there in uh, Nineveh preaching, and he should, listen, he should have been known as a servant of God. But here he is in the midst of a storm, and he's known as a sleeper. Are you listening? Jonah, at this point in his life, should have been known as a servant. He should have been known as that preacher. Vance Habner said the problem with most churches today is most, most of our churches today, listen, we, we got a, 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 it's a non-profit organization. Y'all yeah, get that in a minute. Nobody wants to preach. Nobody wants to say what thus saith the Lord. That's Jonah's problem. Jonah didn't want to go. He didn't care about them. He didn't like them people. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to preach. 
Man, I'm telling you, if you if you told a, a, a really man, a, 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 a preacher, a man of God who's right with God, he wants to see people saved. You said there's a great city over there. There's people going to get saved. There's people need to get right. Go down there and preach to them. I'll tell you, if you told me that night, I'd like to think I'd be chomping at the bit and I'd be ready to go. Jonah said, no, I ain't going. Jonah said, take me over to Tarshish. What? Listen, Jonah should have been known as a servant, but he's down there in the ship. You imagine, man, I'm telling you, we went, we went out deep sea fishing several, several years ago. I'm going to guess it was probably about 1990, uh, probably about 1997 or something like that. There was a bad storm that was going through. Like, it was either a week before or the week after. And, and, man, the water out there, we went out over to, I think it was Manio, some of y'all know. We went out there to Manio over near Naxia somewhere. And, and, and we got on a boat. We went out there. We was out there like 12 hours. We got on it. It was dark. We got off. It was dark. And in between, I, I had been driving a race car that night. I drove, a, I drove a race car on Saturday night. I got out. I went home, took a shower. We got in the car and drove all the way to North Carolina down to Manio. In the middle of the night, we got on the boat. We drove out there. And I went inside the boat. They had, had a little room. And I went inside the boat, Jake. And they had a cooler, probably about four or five foot long. I pulled that cooler over. And I'm talking about it, it was rough. I pulled that cooler over, and I laid down on that bench, and I went to sleep. That's how tired I was. I'm talking about the boat was rocking, honey. I'm talking about I woke up, bro, Steve. Honest to goodness, I woke up, and I was on the other side of that cooler out in the middle of the floor. I'm talking about that was rough. I'm talking about 200 pounds of me went over the cooler, never touched the cooler, and landed in the floor. I was asleep. Don't tell me you can't sleep in a storm. I was asleep. There's a lot of people, there's a lot of people spiritually speaking, and they're away from God, and the storm is rocking. And they're asleep. You look at COVID. You think, you think COVID was an accident? You think God didn't see COVID coming? COVID should have shook us to our knees. COVID should have stirred it up to where when the doors of the church opened, people was at the doors begging to get in, seeking God. I'm telling you, people today still won't come to church. I'm telling you, people's asleep. Are you listening? People should have said, man, we don't know how much time we got. We don't know how, we, how much time we got left to reach our loved ones. We don't know about our co-workers. Listen, COVID could get them. It could be another virus. It could be something. I got to reach them for it's too late. But the problem is we're sleeping. Storm's still brewing. Boat's still rocking. But we're sleeping. Here's a question, man. What's God want you to do? We've all got some. God's, God's got something for everybody. God didn't save anybody to sit soaking sour. God didn't save anybody to ride the pine. Amen. I mean, when I was in high school, Brandon, man, when I played football, that's one thing I did not want. I did not want to break. I wanted to be on offense. I wanted to be on defense. I wanted to be on the punt team. I wanted to be on the punt return team. I wanted to be on the kickoff team. I wanted to, I wanted to be on the field. Y'all listen. I didn't want no breaks. Had to take a break once in a while. I didn't want no breaks. Got a lot of people that come to church and they're happy. Just to be on the team. I'm happy just to be here. I'm saved, preacher. I'm going to heaven. I don't care about nobody else. You're sleeping. Nice I know how. You're sleeping. We've all got something that God wants us to do. Can I say it like this? Every one of us have someone God wants us to witness to. Say, preacher, I ain't never been called to be a soul winner. I ain't never been called to be a witness. Oh, yeah, you ain't got to be called. You've been commanded to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature needs a preacher. You might not never stand in a pulpit, but you, can, you might be in a cubicle with somebody. They can get away from you in the pulpit. They can't get away from you in the cubicle. You go down the road, driving a truck, driving a car, listen, whatever you do for a living, you got somebody in there with you, you got a captive audience. Brother Steve, you, 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 hey, I'm talking about you cuff them and stuff them, but you got a captive audience. Amen. Every one of us, could be the lady at the grocery store, could be the lady at Taco Bell. You go through there, you got five minutes, you got ten minutes, whatever you got with him, could be the doctor. I think my daughter, I remember when I had my neck surgery, I think Dr. Sue got tired of seeing me coming. 
I, bet, I figured, man, if I'm going to pay him all these thousand dollars, he's going to cut my neck. He's going to hear what I got to say, too. If you come to find out his mom and daddy was Christian, but he wasn't. He didn't want to hear it. He's running. But he heard it. You know why? I said, Lord, if I got to go through this, I'm here for a reason. And I ain't here just to pay his bills. Are you listening? I'm not bragging on me. I'm just simply saying God sometimes allows us to go through certain things and be put in a situation, be put in a certain place so that we can reach somebody we've never reached before. Might be somebody at the gas station. You got a gospel track. You ain't got to be the best speaker. Listen, them gospel tracks you got back there, you can pick them up just about. And if you can read, you can witness somebody. You can say, do you know we're all a sinner? Do you know that God sent us the Savior? You know you got to give to salvation. God supplied it for you. All you got to do is simply repent, confess. If you can read, you can witness. Hey, matter of fact, you ain't even got to read. If you've been saved, you can tell them what happened to you. You've been like that blind man say, hey, listen, whether he's a sinner or not, I know not. He said, this is that one thing I know. I was blind, and now I see. I was lost, and now I'm found. I was, listen, I was on my way to hell, and God reached down and saved me. And I know the good grace of God reached down further than I could ever reach to. And I know I'm saved, praise God. Where are we at? Are we serving? Or are we sleeping? Are we serving or are we sleeping? Are we content just to be here? Or are we constantly, like Paul said, steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord? Jonah's character was this. His call was to serve, but his character was a sleeper. Oh, sleeper. You want to be known as a servant or a sleeper? There's the choice he made. There's the character he exhibited. There's Jonah's cost. But watch this. Verse number three says, when he went down there and got on the ship, he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he paid the fare thereof. He paid the fare. That's got the idea that he, he spent the money. He paid. The, he bought the ticket. Can I tell you tonight? Can I tell you tonight? When Jonah went, got on that ship, it cost him more than money. Are you listening? When he went away from God, when he made the choice to say no and to go a different direction, it cost him more than money. And I tell you tonight, if you flee from the presence of the Lord, you will pay the price. These people here, that, listen, I'm talking about the people that used to be here, used to sit here, used to serve God. They're not in church tonight. They're not served. One of two things. They're either not saved or they're going to pay the price. Are you listening? They're going to pay the price. You're not going to backslide. You're not. The old song writer said in the old hymn book, said you can't do wrong and get by. It's impossible. A man's going to sow and he's going to reap what he sows. You're going to pay the fare. You're going to pay the price. Think about this. When we think about this first part, think about the Jonah's cost to himself. Himself. This is what we often focus on and talk about, right? Jonah, y'all know the story. Jonah said no. Jonah got on the boat. He's, he's headed to Tarsus instead of Nineveh. Storm comes up. He tells him, throw me overboard. Jonah, we, we don't understand. He went through the storm. And then he's not only going through the storm. Now he's in the storm. He's thrown over into the, uh, into the sea. God's prepared that great fish, that whale that comes over. Our... Right? We, we talk about that. I'm talking about, we, we, we know the story of Jonah, right? We know the, how God, listen, this is the man that was swallowed by a whale and he lived to tell it. Talking about a whale of a tail. Cost. How'd you like, how'd you like to spend three days and three nights? He described it, basically, he described it in chapter number two as being in the belly of hell. Some people think he actually died and God brought him. I don't know. It's a debate. But that's the way he described it. Jonah suffered because of his disobedience. The whole time, the whole time, listen, could you imagine when they throw him over, he told them to throw him over, and they finally did. Can you imagine when they threw him overboard and that great fish, that, that whale, swallowed him down? Could you imagine three days and three nights? He don't know whether he's going to get out or not. Can you imagine would you not agree? He's probably down there saying, man, if I'd have just went to Nineveh. If I'd have just listened to God, I wouldn't be here. Not going to see mom again. Not going to see daddy again. Not, I'm probably not going to get out of this. I'm, I'm going to be well waste. Y'all all right? If he'd have just went to Nineveh, 
And it just went, you say, preacher, it's going to cost me a lot to serve God. It won't cost you near as much to serve God as it does to say no to God. I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight. I don't know if it's somebody in here, somebody watching online. I don't know who needs to hear this, but I'm telling you, it'll cost you more to walk away from God. It'll cost you more to disobey God than it'll ever cost you for you to surrender your life and to give God your life lock, stock, and barrel. And Jonah's down there in the belly of the whale, and he's suffering. But I want you to stop and think about something. It wasn't just Jonah. It wasn't just himself, but what about those that surrounded him? Jonah went down to Tarshish. He's going to go down there. He's going to get on a boat. He's going to Tarshish. He gets on a boat full of mar- mariners. Some of y'all call them mariners, mariners, whatever y'all want to call them, salesmen. I'm talking about boat boys. They knew how to swab the deck. They, I'm talking about they knew what they was doing, right? The shipmaster, hey, they was going to Tarsh. They was minding their own business until Jonah comes down there and pays the fare and says, I need a ride. I want to go down here. If they Listen, had they known who Jonah was and what he was doing and what it was going to cost them, I doubt they'd have ever let Jonah on that ship. And I tell you this, when you walk away from God, it's not only going to cost you but you running, listen, you are running the ramen of, uh, if that's the right word, you are running it. Hey, watch this. You are going to affect others. Your disobedience will cost others around you. Not only, listen, you can think about, well, if you was doing what you're supposed to be doing, praising God, serving God, working for God, witnessing for God, what a blessing you'd be, what a mouthpiece you could be, what a testimony you could be. But on the flip side of that, Jonah was a direct opposite. He's down there sleeping. He wasn't doing nothing. He's in complete disobedience. Here they are. If you go back down in verse number four, the Lord sent that great wind in the sea, and and there was a tempest so that the ship was like to be broken. I'm talking about a storm of their life. Verse number four, five says, and the mariners were afraid and cried every man to his God. These men didn't even worship probably, but here they are. They're on that boat. They got a God somewhere. They're finding a God somewhere. they looking for help. Y'all know when y'all know when 9-11 hit way back yonder 20 years ago, whatever, y'all 20-something years ago, 21 years ago now, I guess it is. Y'all remember when that hit, everybody went to church. Them people wasn't Christians, most of them. They was, they was coming to church. They, I mean, it was like a, a rabbit foot. Man, they was looking for some help. Y'all all right? I'm sure some of them was really saved and backslid. But I'm talking about they was people that didn't know God. But when catastrophe hit, they was looking for somebody to help them. These men was in trouble. They crying out to their gods, little G God. They, they got, I don't know what they got on that boat, but here they are, they crying out, they are in trouble. Jonah would lay down fast asleep. There's people, listen, there's people all around us. Even during, think about COVID now, the last, it's what, going three years now, and catastrophe, and people dying, people sick. You got all kinds of other stuff that's coming around. And people, I'm telling you, people out in this world is hurting. People out in this world, they are looking for some help. They are looking for some hope. But what's your church door? Sleeping. We had ease and Zion. We're comfortable. We got our four. We don't need no more. We ain't worried about nobody else. It cost him. It cost those around him. Jonah made a choice. Jonah's character was known. Jonah suffered the cost. Then last, watch this. See Jonah's cry. Jonah's cry. In chapter 2, now I ain't reading all this. I take it for granted. You know, when chapter 2, verse 1 says, he's in the belly of the well now. Verse 17 of chapter 1 said, The Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. And he heard me out of the belly of hell, cried I, and I heard his my voice. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the seas, and the flood compassed me about. All the billows and thy waves passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy 
temple. The waters can pass me about, even to the soul. The depth closed me around about. The weeds were wrapped about my head. You, you get the idea? He's talking about he's at the, in the belly of the whale. He, he's down in that fish. He's at the bottom of the sea. He's got seaweed wrapped around him. He said, I went down to the bottoms of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet hast thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee in thy holy temple, that they that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that. I have vowed salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Here it is now. He disobeyed God. He went away from God. He suffered. They suffered. And Jonah's in the belly of the fish. Here he is, three days and three nights, and he's crying out to God. God, God is, you know, sometimes God will let you hit rock bottom, get you to cry out to him. He's not, listen, Jonah not praying for spiritual salvation, but physical salvation, deliverance. Say, so how you know that, preacher? Look back at chapter 1, verse 9. Look what he said. He said unto them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord. The God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Jonah was all, listen, the word fear, he, he said, I'm a Hebrew. That's a, that's a Jew. And he said, I fear the Lord. That word fear, it's a word that speaks of fear or reverence, uh, reverence or, or to be afraid and all. And in one sense, you could interpret this word to, to, to speak of a uh, cowardly fear. But another sense is to fear the Lord with reverence, honor. Hatred of evil and trust. That's what Jonah's saying. And though Jonah didn't always exhibit his trust, he was already a child. He's like a lot of so-called church members today. They say, but they don't, you wouldn't know what to look at them. You wouldn't know what to watch them. But Jonah's in disobedience. He said, I'm a Hebrew. I fear the Lord. Listen to this. Listen to me real close. Jonah was sleeping when he should have been weeping, and he wound up weeping when he could have been reaping. God told Jonah, go to Nineveh, that great city, cry out against it. The wickedness is great. Jonah said, no, three days and three nights. Listen, don't miss this. Three days and three nights, he's in the fish's belly. When he gets out, when he gets out, he says, I'm going. Y'all know the story, right? He goes down there. He's, he's telling them, 40 days, 40 days. And you know what happens? The whole city repent, right? You know what the Bible said? The whole city repent. They had sackcloth and ashes to have revival. I'm talking about God blessed his word. God used the man of God when he got down there. What if he went down there to start with? What if Jonah, when God told him to go down into that great city and cry out against their wickedness, and hey, listen, what if Jonah had been brokenhearted? What if Jonah had a burden and said, God, your word has told me, and it's your will for my life to go to Nineveh and to preach and to reach those people for you? And hey, what if he'd have went? What if he'd have been weeping then? Praying for lost souls, praying for God to use him, praying for God to protect him, praying for God to save them and to turn that nation around. What if he'd been weeping then? If he'd been weeping then, he could have been reaping. But he was sleeping when he should have been weeping. And he wound up weeping when he could have been reaping. A sobering thought, isn't it? The question tonight is this. Are you sleeping on God? Are you sleeping on God? What's God asked you to do? What has God put in your heart to do? What has God showed you from this book that you need to be doing? And then here's the question. Are you doing it? Say, preacher, man, I'm not, I'm not a man, or, or I'm never going to be the preacher, or I, I can't be the pastor. You may never be the pastor. You're right. But I'm telling you, there's work to do. There's something for all of us to do. What has God got for you? Or you're doing it. The choices you make 
have consequences. Every choice you make has consequences. They may come on you. They may come upon your family. They may come upon your loved ones. They may come upon those that you have an influence around you. Every choice you and I make brings about consequences. And decisions that you make today determine your destination tomorrow and your destiny for eternity. Are you sleeping on God? And I say this, and I say this in kindness, I say this in love. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. Don't sleep through the storm. You say, Jonah got a second chance. Jonah got out, and, and God's sitting down there. And God, hey, God didn't change his mind. God still wanted Jonah to go down. You say, Jonah got a second chance. He'll give me a second chance. Let me ask you a question. Why would you want to have to go through what Jonah went through to get God to get you to do what he wanted you to do and start with? Why do you want God to have to press you in a corner to get you to do what he needs you to do and wants you to do? Jonah, oh, sleeper, oh, sleeper. Jonah was asleep on God. God help us. Father, I pray you take the message tonight. Speak to our hearts. Help us tonight. Do it for your glory. God, I pray you, God, you'd shake us and wake us and help us for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.